In a world plagued by reboots, haunted by sequels, dominated by the same old shit. Get ready for an original podcast that will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you. Starring Ginger Josh, Adam the Hare, and introducing the immortal Frank. Hold on to your butts. It's the Game Rage Movies TV Podcast. Back again to discuss how we're joining the cult of Lumen <laughs> and uh, discussing Severance, episode number two. I imagine this is how they go like internally with Scientology. I imagine this is what it's like, like how it is in, in Severance. It's very like. Remember the last outburst you had? Oh, hmm. you need to go to the, what was it? The break, you need to go to the break room. You need to go to the auditing. (laughs) Yeah, and get your ass beat. Um, Anyways, before we get into that, Cooper just keeps whining. I don't know what his problem is, but. (laughs) You guys, you guys, it's. it's, I swear to God, I, he's been crazy the last like two days. 9-11 part two's coming, oh my God. Yeah, it better be. It better be 9-11 times a thousand, all right? Or it better be fucking uh, the mega 10.0 earthquake better hit. Or else I'm going to sell. Shh. Anyways. If you want to check out all our stuff, you go to GameRageMagazine.com. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine. Twitter slash X at GameRageMag. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Game Rage Magazine. If you like music, you can follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official, and you can go to the All Gas No Trash podcast where we were will be imminently, imminently reviewing Paris Hilton's new album for the Icon. Oh God! I'm so stoked for this. I'm so excited. My ears are gonna bleed. I'm so excited because it'll finally clean all that wax out of my ears that I've have been neglecting for the last. Decade. And the black goo from uh, Severance. Yeah, it's just gonna, <laughs> it's gonna pour out of my ears. Uh, If you like anime and mangas, you can go listen to the Anime Syndicate podcast and follow Frank at anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast on Instagram. Additionally, if you like tabletop gaming, you can go listen to A Slice of Dice. Also, don't listen to the first episode. I'm just saying. Just listen to episode two and on, all right? Just just please do us a favor, all right? Just start at episode two. If you like us, then go back and listen to episode one because it's just us making our characters for Dungeons & Dragons. And people apparently thought it was boring and... I was like, I was just trying to be completionist. I thought people liked that stuff, but I guess not. Anyways, uh, that'll be that'll be it. So Severance episode number two. You already did all the plugs. Yeah, I just did them while you were like dicking around. Oh, well, I don't know if you were dicking around, but uh, like I said, this this show is it, it is slowly escalating now. They're giving us like this little drip of they're giving us the trickle of information. Like we get to meet. The guy from, uh, God damn it, what was the name of his department? Christopher Walken. What was his, what was his department? Was it like visual aids or something? I don't know. Some, no, some, it was optics and design. Yeah, optics and design. There we go. I think his name was Bert. I don't Bert. remember. Yeah, yeah. I could and, be wrong. I could be and, wrong. And, uh, and yeah, they, so we're getting that, oh, it's revealed that there are other people here yeah. that are in other departments. They, they kind of alluded to it, but now it's like, oh, shit, you get to see somebody. Yeah. But we and, start off with the episode yeah, yeah. Uh, with Heli voluntarily opting for this surgery and also for this uh, position that she's going to be fulfilling, which is part of the data refinement management or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, oh, shit. <sighs> and that guy, Mr. Milchek, I don't, I don't know who, what the fuck he is. Is he like... The underling of Miss Miss Corbill or something. Yeah, he's like the he's like the she's like the manager or like the director. Uh huh. He's like the manager or like a supervisor. You know what I'm saying? Well, shit. I guess technically, what's his name is like the supervisor. Ma- Mark. Or wait, what's his name? The main okay, guy. Okay, but one thing I'm confused about, <laughs> as far as episode two goes, Mark is the same person. By name 
in both the above and below. Right? But he's yeah. two different people. Right. But Miss Corbill, Miss Selvig are the same person, but they have two different names. Or just, there's two different people. Right. But why? I, I don't I don't understand you. Like, is she in control of both versions? She's only playing the role of both people as like a as like a uh, to be a spy against uh, Mark himself. Yeah, I don't I don't remember exactly because it's been so long since I've seen it. But I did I do find it weird that he is like the only person. Well, as far as we know, he's the only person that goes by his name on both the inside and he's the well, same name. Helly and Helly's no, addressed by her for like her. Yeah. Above, she's the same person. Right. Yeah. Two different people. Right. And that Mr. Milchick is the same person in both sides, unless he's just completely brainwashed. Because there was like that part when he was passing by the leader, whatever his name, they don't even mention his name, but there was like a mural of the guy, like a stone mural of the guy. He's like, oh, I just love the way the light hits this uh, this stone mural of the guy. Yeah, what the fuck? Three eggs, name? three uh, eggs and, a, and milk. That's what he ate for breakfast every day. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's like Steve Jobs. If he like, if Steve Jobs was a cult leader, this, this would be the fucking guy. He looks like Frederick Ingalls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure why that was brought up in the conversation, but uh, then and then we have. Uh, What's her name coming to from her surgery after she gets the little pill or thing inserted into her brain? And then Mr. Bilchek's like, hey, welcome to the club. And you can leave if you want to, but you signed up for this. Yeah. And she's like, I don't I don't believe I don't believe that. <laughs> and I do think it's interesting that she constantly wants to rebel. Like, she's like I don't want to be here. Pretty much every time. Yeah. Well, now, now she's starting to comply, but yeah, it, it is interesting that she had a rebellious nature, and then, uh, and then she <coughs> decides, if I'm not mistaken, like something that happens afterwards is uh, she decides to be disobedient, uh, and then Mr. Milchek, r- like right after they were explaining the the whole computer shit, he's like, oh. It's not supposed to make sense to you right now, but it'll start making sense to you like once you see the numbers. Like if they, if you, if it starts feeling scary and shit. Like you'll you'll start piecing it together, and then they have like a melon party, and then Irv fucking, <laughs> Irv is like falling asleep, or they start talking about him like falling asleep because he's one of the older, uh, yeah, pe- people within the office. And uh, who, who's the what's the the the, the rotund fella? Oh man, I'll, Dylan. Dylan. Yeah. Like, he's such a fucking mark for the oh, he's like, Yeah, he is. He's like, oh, my God. He's I like, can't believe he's I like, get I can't believe what you get. He's like, you get the fucking finger traps. He's got a whole, he's got his whole desk is like all this shit that he's won from like. Yeah. Drawings. Being, yeah. Drawings. He's like, oh, man, if if we hit, if we hit our quarter, quarterly quota. You get a waffle party. We get a waffle party. <laughs> and she's like, a waffle party. He's like, oh, yeah, it's a, it's the tits. Like, basically. Yeah. And he also gives exposition on possible lore or theory about what the numbers mean. And one of them was that the they're scraping the ocean for, like, life or whatever. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't fucking know. Or trash that. or bad things yeah. or whatever. I don't know so they could, like, do stuff. Uh, and then at some point, Heliar decides that she's going to... Uh, she's going to rebel and she just wants to go back up. And it's like, well... What if I just gave a note to myself that says I quit or whatever, and I just go up? He's like, no, there's sensors. There's, there's, you can't go up the elevator. It's like, it's not, it's prohibited. Yeah. So she goes up, and then you get, like, this G-Man figure that comes out and uh, is going to escort her to the break room where who the fuck knows what even happens there because they didn't even fully explain what happens. But uh, then Mark makes the save. He's like, no, it was me. I... I'm her supervisor. We were just doing this thing, and I'll yeah. cover for her. Well, he didn't say that out loud. Well, he basically takes the blame. He takes the blame for it. Then he's he's escorted through this long hallway by this figure, and uh, and then greeted uh, greeted by Miss Corbel. I don't remember if they follow up on that conversation from not. I don't think they did. They don't. So I, I don't even know what that fuck happens there. Uh, let's see. 
You, you got you got stuff to add for the episode? Yeah. So uh, that dude who I forget what his name is, but he's like the head of security. That guy who's like the G-man dude. Yeah. He's like the head of security, and he is like in charge of of like putting them to the punishments or whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> so he goes and. Like, when he takes her over, or when he's going to take her, he's like, all right, come with me. And, like, you don't know where they're going at, yeah, at all. He's like, come with me. And then he's like, oh, like, Mark knows where they're going. So that's why he's like, oh, no, he takes the blame. And then they get there, and he goes, when they open that break room door, he, it's like this long, foreboding hallway. And then the dude just closes the door behind him. Where It's the opposite of their office is, like, that whole space is bright. It's meant to be, like, sterile. This is dark and dingy. Dingy, yeah. And this is kind of, like, part of the... Because at the end of the episode... Uh, or was it the last episode? Or, no, it was when, when PD plays him that fucking thing. That recording. No, I think it happened this episode. Yeah, that was, like, at the end. That's, like... That's what, that's what happens in the break room. It's, like, some kind of, like, brainwashing that they do. And it's like, a, or what is it? It's like re-education or something like that, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And uh, with this, torment. Yeah, and it's it's um because this is very because that guy the guy who's the the face or whatever on that thing is Kier. That's his name, and he's I think they say it in this episode because the oh the optics and design guy Bert and Irving are talking about that when they meet in the wellness room. Or about to go into the wellness room. <laughs> okay, that that was interesting. But anyways, continue. Yeah. Uh, well, anyways, so that Kier is the guy who founded Lumen. He's like the head dude or whatever. Yeah. And so, basically, they like Kier is like this god figure inside of Lumen, and like I said, it's it's very cultish. It's very culty, and that's kind of like the people that are the people on the inside. I, I don't remember exactly, but my my theory right now, again, with having forgotten because it's been so long when I've, since I've watched this, is that this, like, on Lumen's end, this is some kind of, like, social engineering experiment also because you'll see later on, because I know there is something that they talk about. It, it gets very, like, oh, shit. Like, that's fucking crazy. Like, it's cool crazy. Yeah. When something happens and they're revealed of, like, things of the past and why things are the way they are. And it's very, it's very interesting. Yeah. But it's very cultish, and it's a very like social engineering experiment at this point. I feel like it's like Boeing compartmentalizing, like one, yeah. one pool of people take care of one thing, and right? Then the other, but then like nobody ever knows anything completely. Your real self outside of work doesn't no idea what you're doing on the inside. Yeah, it has no idea what's going on. And I do think this is like a rather interesting social commentary about people when they talk about their own jobs about how like they tune out or they space out to get through the eight hours like mm-hmm. this is taken in the literal sense that you are no longer the same person when you go and you're not really the same person when you go to work anyways like you no, kind of yeah. play a role versus your home life like you're two different people anyways but this yeah. is take it to the nth degree right and then like during that melon party that they had or whatever uh-huh. uh dude that was like that was fucking office hell, man. It's a, it's like the illusion of choice because the guy was like, Dylan was looking at the, le- the lemon balls yeah. or the, the melon balls. He's like, hmm, I wonder which one I'm going to pick. And they're all the fucking <laughs> yeah, same. it's the exact same <laughs> thing. And they're, they're sitting there and they're, when they're doing that little game with the, with the roll, the ball or whatever, uh, man, that was also like, that is like, that is corporate hell, dude. That is, oh, let's all introduce ourselves. And she's like, I don't fucking, I don't know anything about myself. And it's all superficial yeah. things. It's like, oh, we know a lot about you. You're a redhead and yeah. you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mark never actually divulges information about, well, because I mean, how, how, how much could he know about himself within this setting? Because it's like a clean slate, essentially. Yeah. Even though he's worked there for two years. Uh, but... Uh, but what was the other thing that happened in the ed- that episode? Oh, there was a whole thing between Irv and Mark talking about the photos. Cause oh, yeah. He's he, pissed about that. He's like, what's going on, man? Like, that's against protocol. What are you doing? Well, that's where we start to see the culty rules come into play. Because he's like, mm, if you refer to section whatever of the Lumen Handbook, it will tell you that the photos must be remain up until the new one is taken. And yeah. then the old ones can be taken down. Yeah. And... This is the divergence. This is what I think the social experimenting part of this is. Is like this is the point in the experiment where the divergence happens. 
because PD has this thing. I think this happens all the time, but then they either will like recover from it or there's a divergence. So like something gets broken like in the chain. Like so Mark, this this iteration goes in like he changes the he takes the photo down too early. That divergence then puts them on this path that like takes them to the bad timeline or whatever I feel like. Is how it's like it's works inside there or whatever. Yeah. I'm also curious about what the nature of the goo, the black goo is. Oh yeah, that, because, that was interesting. Because Irv got it wasn't that the melon had black content itself on it, but he looked at his hand, there was like these dust particles that were yeah. black. And there was a point where he fell asleep. And then the goo started like flowing. So yeah. I don't know if that only happens when he starts getting lucid in his dreams or if that is because it I don't know. I don't know. if Yeah, it, yeah. I have no idea what what that I don't remember what that was about, what the deal was with that. But it's very crazy to see. It was crazy to see that he freaks out and he's like, ah, oh, I, I got to go. And then he just gets up and goes. Yeah. And then within that session of them like tossing the ball around. Yeah, like Irv is such a mark that he knows like the nine core principle. He's like, "What's your favorite?" Yeah, uh, I don't, I don't remember what the answer was, but yeah. Yeah, and then uh, he's like, "Oh, well, Irv, Irv is like all of them. I love all nine. <laughs> but if I had to pick one, I would say, I don't know what it was, like sunshine or something like that. Some stupid thing." Yeah. All but, right. So now, now I kind of see what's happening a bit with Lumen because I didn't catch it the first episode. I must have like not paid attention to the finer details, but uh, outside Mark is a historian of archives for Lumen. Yeah. That's what that's what he's being told. Right. But he works in this data refinement, so yeah. you know, there's a lie there. Yeah, right. Uh, so that, that's rather interesting. And then, uh, yeah, I think all the characters have, like, the discussion about the Audis, like the Indies and Audis. He's like, I wonder what my Audi does. Like, yeah. I don't know. We don't know. We're like, you don't. We don't know if you, you have a family or, and what what the deal with that is. And then they also come across a subject of sleep that they don't really, they don't actually go to sleep since right. they leave and they come back and it's like an it's ongoing doing, hell. It's like a, a constant waking hell. Yeah. He, and he's like, yeah, you know, you just you don't feel the effects of you don't feel you feel the effects of sleep, but you don't actually experience it. So you know, try to focus on enjoying when you come in in the morning about how you feel refreshed and rejuvenated. That's crazy. It's like you walk out and then walk right back in, man. Yeah. Um, and then I think at some point Mark goes on a date. Yeah. It was, well, I don't know if it was a date, but it's like the lady who's the mid. I guess it's a date it's with midwife. like the midwife yeah. for his sister or whatever. So he's drinking excessively. Oh yeah. Gets so drunk that he ends up passing these people that are protesters of Lumen. Uh, that they're brainwashing kids. I, I don't remember what the ex- the whole thing was, but that they were brainwashing kids to work or be, but like have their mind White, altered. Yeah. Like the way the adults have been, and uh, and then Mark goes on this whole fucking thing about. He's like, man, you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. He was like giving this whole spiel that probably was implanted in his brain. So it's like, I also wonder about that part whether Mark is in control of himself even outside because he's so brainwashed about Lumen. Like, is does that does that also trigger in his little pill thing? Or? Oh, it might. It, yeah. it very well could. That's why he feels so fucking. Well, because to him, I. You'll see, you'll see when it gets to the point when, because I do remember his little backstory, uh, and like there is a plot twist about him and his backstory, and it's very, oh shit, it's one of those like, nah, nah, yeah. what's going on here? Yeah, uh, shit. So Mark gets reprimanded at some point, and uh, protects Heli from getting punished and all that shit. Uh, and then, fuck, what else happens? Uh, well, the wellness check happens. That that little wellness check with, with, with Irving. Irv. Man, that is, that was, that was like miserable. It's like, you're getting this wellness check and then, or it's like, it's supposed to be like a positive, but then they're like, oh, minus 10 points. If you get to zero, the session will end. Like, okay, so does that thing about them 
appreciating all the finer details of their Audi equally. Does that have to do with the numbers at all? No. I think that this that this is a it's like it's a control piece. Because this person that's not them is like, you know, it's like your your in in self is completely submissive and subverted to like Lumen. That's like the whole point of this. And so they do these things as like, oh, it's it's like a oh, this is a it's like the carrot and the stick, right? But like Oh, the carrot also has the stick attached to it. So it's like, oh, well, you have to take the carrot and you have to eat it a certain way. If you don't eat it a certain way, oh, we're going to take the carrot back. And so it's, it's, I think it's something with the chip that's supposed to, like, soothe them. Like, that's the whole point of the wellness deals is, like, to soothe them or whatever. I wonder if it's, like, a Blade Runner 2049 where, like, we need you to come back to baseline. We need you yeah. to be at a five. Yeah, yeah. I think that's kind of, like, what it is. Because they're, like, oh, if you escalate to, like, a nine, we need, we need to come down. Yeah, we need you to come down. But, we'll uh, tell you some facts about your Audi. Don't tell anyone with the facts. They're just for you. And then, oh, oh. And then he gets to, she's, like, please, minus ten points. Please show excitement about them equally. Like, yeah. do not show preference to one fact over the other. Yeah, and then uh, Christopher Walken's character, who I'm, I'm hoping is named Bert. Yeah, uh, I think he's named Bert, yeah. Man, that... <laughs> it's like they're visually getting psyoped on with the... the Even the fucking the art, art on the walls. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah. Uh, we thought this would do whatever the fuck it was supposed to do. Uh, so the fact that they even have, like, a department for optics and design... I don't even know if it's to boost morale, but to even have that in place, like that, that shit's fucking wild. Yeah, it is. And uh, it's it's funny when you, when he go, because there is a, a sequence where he eventually, they eventually go there to optics and design to like their department. Uh-huh. And uh, it it's crazy. The sh- it, It's fucking crazy. Like it, it gets crazy. And it's funny because like Bert and Irving are like, kind of gay for each other a little bit mm. and i don't think their audi selves are no gay. Oh, so like yeah. that's another like thing that is is yeah. like wait a minute like what yeah like you are almost basically a completely different person on the inside as you are on the outside yeah and then uh at some point after the date that mark goes on he meets miss selvig again yeah she comes over yeah and she gives some lore about her husband dying yeah, and how he was going to rebuild the house for them or something in heaven or wherever. And he's like, oh, if you find another man, I'll, I'll build an extra room or some bullshit. Yeah. Like to say he was a cuck or something. I, I don't yeah. fucking know. I, I mean, listen, I told Katie, I'm like, listen, if I die, you better fucking die alone. All right. You better, <laughs> <laughs> you better never look at anyone again. All right. Uh, and then she comes in with like tea or what? She come in with tea. Yeah, it was like some kind tea, of tea, tea or, milk, or yeah. like they were, they were gonna drink tea and milk, and I don't know, man. So another trauma-related thing, possibly even with Mark going through old boxes of a woman. <clears throat> don't know who the fuck that is, but well, I think. Oh yeah, you're gonna find they out. Said, they said his, it was his wife. Like yeah, he away. already said they already said that that yeah. his wife died. Yeah. Okay, that's that's his backstory. His wife died. Yeah. Or so he was told, or so, or so you think. Right. I, honestly, I don't even know if he even had a wife. Like, who, who the fuck knows? Who knows? Like, some of these people, I kind of think that, because they don't directly say this, but, like, some of them, I think that they, that they do some kind of Jedi mind trickery on them to get them to think something bad has happened to them, to get them to, like, I want to do this. I want to get this chip in my head. Because that's the whole point is it's for people who ex- generally experience something tragic in their lives uh, and they don't want to deal with it. So they go for eight hours a day. They can just they're not they don't exist for eight hours a day. And they and get then, money. Yeah. And then they and they get paid very well. They live in that lumen subsidized housing, which is very strange. It's like a communist fucking paradise or whatever. Yeah. Uh, everything's exactly the same. And uh, it's like living in a fucking hostel or whatever. In a so nice, it's like, it's like a suburban hostel. hell. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it's corporate hell, and then you go home to suburban hell, and then you live next to all the people that you work with, not knowing who you are to each other on the inside. All right, is it a thing where these people don't even actually exist? Like they were actually lab created people within Lumen, and that they got implanted memories, and they're finding out these things. These fake people are going crazy, so they. They implant memories of them of like a fake life, and then they go and live out that life so that they can function, and then they come back and be slaves. 
<laughs> no, it's not. I don't think it's anything like that. I don't remember it being anything like that. Okay. Who knows? Maybe season two it'll it'll turn into that, but I don't I don't think that was what it was. Now. Okay. Uh, fuck, man. What were the other details? Uh, well, Irv getting punished for dozing off and shit. Uh, well, it wasn't really a punishment. It was like, oh, we need you to just do a wellness check. And okay. so the wellness check is meant to be something that's a kind of a positive. It's it's very weird. It's not a punishment, but it can be. It's so vague too. It's like. Your Audi is a nice person. Yeah. Your Audi does things. Your Audi donates to charity. Like you are well liked and yeah. well respected in your. Your community. Audi owns three plants. Like it's it's weird shit. Like your or no? What was it? Your Audi collects records. Like that. Like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> your your Audi is the most decent and the most all right. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking a dude. Oh man, we should work for Lumen shit. Yeah. Uh, and then towards the end of the episode, Pete is discovered to be living in a fucking <laughs> greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, man, and that was fucking hilarious. He has these memories or weird things that happen that causes his fucking brain to bleed or his nose to bleed. And he's like, Mark, Mark is like, oh, yeah, you know what? I, I can't let you live here, especially in a fucking greenhouse. So why don't you come back to my place? And I'll have you live in the fucking yeah, basement. Yeah, you can just live in the basement. <laughs> Don't worry, it's got a couch in its own bathroom, so yeah. you'll be all right. I mean, yeah, there's a bunch of boxes of my dead wife shit down there. Right. But, you know. So he ends up taking a shower, and Mark's like, are you all right, man? He's like, yeah, I'm good. And then he starts having his weird hallucinations or some shit. So, so he starts off in one body yeah. of, like, Pete, his work life person. Yeah. And then he's in the actual shower yeah. as out, Audi Pete. Yeah. So that, that was real fucking interesting. Yeah, that was. That was very strange. So... Are there any other details? That we I think forget? that was basically at the end. Is Well, he collapses at the end. Like, oh, he right. fucking has his things and then he collapses. So... Yeah. Um, basically, he talked about... That was one thing he talked about was it's a side effect of the reintegration. It's called reintegration sickness. Mm. And he's like, "What? wow, that's what, what does that have to do with or whatever? Or what does that happen? Or what, is, what do they do for you? And he's like, I don't know. I'm the first dumbass to fucking have it. Because I'm the first one to be fucking reintegrated. Yeah. And so uh, they just don't know what the fuck. Like, and he's like, damn, that sucks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the gentleman from uh, O&D, Optics and Design, his name was Bert. And uh, yeah, they were like, that whole speech about atoning for, I don't know what the fuck they were saying. Some real crazy shit. None may atone for my actions but me. Right, yeah. And that was and that was in that little recording thing or whatever. Yeah. And Milchek is the one that's like yelling at him, telling him fucking, I don't think you mean it. And I do remember you do get to see a scene when I think it's Mark gets goes in when he goes, he goes in the break room again. And I think you do get to see what they do in there. And it is like re-education camp basically. That's what it what it is. And that's kind of like what they're obviously uh, like showing you. If your interior guy fucks up, then you got to be sent to re-education camp. All right. So, is there anything about your innie and Audi, like, okay, your Audi self, your your real version of yourself, uh, is it like the worst traits of yourself that exhibit in the innie? No, I don't. I don't know about that. Um, if I don't remember about that exactly, there. Okay, there are. I'm not, I don't want to spoil it because there are there are some crazy things that do happen that you like probably you're just like wait what they like I, I didn't know that this 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 could be done like what the fuck is this th- what and it's you just got to see it so I don't want to say because I don't think that that was a direct correlation was like oh it's the traits I do think it was like a split like splitting you down the middle. And there's like a segmented portion of you. I think they do explain it in one of the later episodes. Uh-huh. Like exactly kind of what's going on. Yeah. If I remember right. I don't remember what the explanation is exactly off the top of my head. Like I said, it's been, well, when did this come out? 2022. So it, it's been it's been two and a half years since I've seen this. So okay. uh, I don't exactly remember. But it's almost like I'm experiencing this for the first time. But like stuff's coming back to me as we're watching these episodes. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh that's it's what your Audi knows. I'm like, yeah, I basically watched this as an innie and then and then now my Audi is remembering. I think I'm having reintegration sickness. I think my nose is bleeding. Shit. Uh and that one scene with uh, Irv and Dylan and Helly, they're like she's like, "Oh my god. I oh saw god. one of the numbers that were scary." Yeah. <laughs> that shit was kind of funny. Yeah, and then and then Dylan's like, he's like, "Fuck yeah." 
good. Yeah, fuck yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make the goal now. We're gonna, we're gonna hit the wall. We're gonna get the we're fucking wall party. party. <laughs> hell yeah, this bitch is in hell yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was sis. a cool episode. There was like yeah. tons of little details revealed. Uh, weird shit with the black goo. Uh, another department has been discovered. We know there's like a Gestapo or like. Mm-hmm. Some yeah. weird SS type of uh, security police. Security yeah. police within uh, Lumen. Uh, I'm just very confused about some of the characters, like Mr. Milchek, getting to be both people, but still being himself and not just being like Miss Col- Miss Corbel being her own person on top, and then Miss, or rather Miss Selvig being on top. And then Miss Corbel on the bottom, like I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like that's fake. It's she's a fucking spy on fucking Mark. Like, yeah, it might be. I don't, I don't specifically remember. Yeah, but you might be right. I don't know. That, that's kind of like what she's I the think. same person on both yeah, sides. Yeah, just pretending. She's to be, just pretending yeah. to be. You know, get the. That is what it seems like for sure. So, I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. yeah cool this episode. show does escalate quickly. Like, it, yeah. It, the first episode was kind of like. It's setting shit up, and it's kind of like, eh. But once you get past two, you're like, oh, shit. A lot of stuff got dropped in two. And because it's only ten episodes, or wait, is it ten episodes? Yeah, it's like nine. Yeah, nine episodes. It's like, boom, 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 boom. Shit happens quick. Yeah. And that's good. That's I like that in a show. Yeah. where I like, like, don't give me this fucking preamble nonsense and give me six episodes to get to the goddamn point. Like, let's, let's escalate shit quickly. And uh, not knowing if they're going to get canceled for, you know, they one and done it. Right. True. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, anyway, this, this is a uh, this was a good this is a good ass episode. I do think uh, I, I don't particularly like the soundtrack for the show. Uh, I think they should go with fucking. Uh, well, it's too late now, but <laughs> <laughs> to to. To fit the mood of like what's going on with weird psychological thriller shit, I think they should have got like Trent Reznor, who already did. He's already done like a number of movies, but yeah. I feel like he would fit in this fucking <clears throat> scenario for Severance. Yeah, but, you know they went with this person. I, I don't really like the score for the show. No, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, not that great. Yeah, but so anyways, anyways. Uh, the end. Well, the end. All right. Well, if you want to listen to more of our shit, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine, Twitter slash X at GameRageMag, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube Game Rage Magazine. You can also go follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official and listen to All Gas No Trash. If you like anime and manga, you can go listen to the Frank mangas. over there at uh, Anime Syndicate, and you can follow him on Instagram at Anime underscore Syndicate underscore Podcast. And uh, while you're at it, go check out A Slice of Dice, and don't listen to episode one. And also maybe check out the Game Race Star Wars podcast. I don't know. If you're feeling lucky. All right. That'll be it for us. Catch you guys on the next one. Oh, hey there, buddy. It's me, 1930s announcer guy. Here to congratulate you on making it through this episode. As our heroes are getting in their jalopies and riding off into the literal sunset, they wanted me to tell you thanks for listening to their radio broadcast. And should you be so kind as to follow them on some fancy schmancy radio station publication called Instagram and TikTok at Game Range Magazine, and on some other thing called Twitter slash X at Game Range Mag. Also, they uh, wanted me to inform you and ask if you could be so kind again as to uh, visit something called a website at www.gameragemagazine.com. I don't know what that is, buddy, but uh, you should probably go do those things. And, you know, don't forget to tune in next time to the Game Rage Movies and TV Radio Broadcast. 